Welcome back. In this lecture, I want to derive another identity, which is the sum of the Fibonacci numbers squared. Okay, so we're going to look for a formula for f1 squared plus f2 squared all the way to f sub n squared, which we write in this notation, the sum from i equals 1 to n of f sub i squared. Okay, so we're going to look for the formula. And then um, after we conjecture what the formula is, then as a mathematician, I will show you how to prove the uh, relationship. So let's go again to a table. Here I write down the first seven Fibonacci numbers, n equals 1 through 7, and then the sum of the squares. So the first entry is just f sub, n, f sub 1 squared, which is just 1 squared is 1. Okay. The second entry, we add 1 squared to 1 squared, so we get 2. The next entry, we have to square 2 here to get 4, and we add that to 2, which is the sum of the squares of the first 2. So we get 6. And 6 actually factors, so what is the factor of 6? Six? 6 is 2 times 3. Okay. That kind of looks promising because we have two Fibonacci numbers as factors of 6. Um, for the next entry, n equals 4, we have to add 3 squared to 6. So we add 9 to 6. That gives us 15. And 15 also has a unique factor, 3 times 5. And look again, 3 times 5 are also Fibonacci numbers. Okay. The next one, we have to add 5 squared, which is 25. So 25 plus 15 is 40. Um, before we do that, actually, we already have an idea, 2 times 3, 3 times 5. And we can look at the previous 2 that we did. So we have 2 is 1 times 2, so that also works. And 1 is 1 times 1, that also works. This one, we add 25 to 15, so we get 40. That's 5 times 8, also works. And the next one, we add 8 squared is 64 plus 40 is 104, also factors to 8 times 13. So we're seeing that the sum over the first 6 Fibonacci numbers, say, is equal to the 6th Fibonacci number times the 7th. Okay. So the sum over the first n Fibonacci numbers, excuse me, is equal to the nth Fibonacci number times the n plus 1 Fibonacci number. Okay, that's our conjecture. The sum from i equals 1 to n f sub i squared is equal to f sub n times f sub n plus 1. Okay? So let's prove this. Let's try and prove this. Um, how do we do that? Well, you know, kind of theoretically or mentally, you would say, well, we're trying to find the left-hand side, so we should start with the left-hand side. But we have our conjecture. So there's nothing wrong with starting with the right-hand side and then deriving the left-hand side turns out to be a little bit easier to do it that way. So we're going to start with the right-hand side and try to derive the left. We start with the right-hand side, so we can write down f sub n times f sub n plus 1. And you can see how that will be easier by this first step. We have this is equal to f sub n, and the only thing we know is the recursion relation. So we can replace f sub n plus 1 by f sub n plus f sub n minus 1. So that's the recursion relation. And immediately when you do the distribution, you see that you get an f sub n squared, right? Which is the last term on the, um, in this summation, right? The f sub n squared term. 
And what remains, if we write it in the same way as the smaller index times the larger index, we change the order here, we have f sub n minus 1 times f sub n. Okay? And we can continue. We can do this over and over again. We replace fn by fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2. So then we'll have an fn squared plus fn minus 1 squared plus the leftover, right? And we can keep going. So we're just repeating the same step over and over again until we get to the last bit, which will be f sub n squared plus f sub n minus 1 squared plus, right, and we're going all the way down to the bottom. We're going to have an f sub 2 squared. And what will be the last term, right? The last term is going to be the leftover, which is going to be down to 1, f sub 1, and f sub 1 larger than 1, f sub 2. Okay? So if we go all the way down, replacing the largest index f in this term by the recursion relation, and we bring it all the way down to um, n equals 2, right? So then we end up with a f sub 1 and an f sub 2 at the end. So this isn't exactly the sum, except for the fact that f sub 2 is equal to f sub 1. So the fact that f sub 1 equals 1 and f sub 2 equals 1 rescues us. So we end up with the summation from i equals 1 to n of f sub i squared. So we prove the uh, identity, prove the identity, okay? This particular identity we will see again. It has a very nice geometrical interpretation which will lead us to draw what is considered the iconic diagram for the Fibonacci numbers. So I'll see you in the next lecture.